We have a, another user that, uh, that is here to speak with us today. And uh, he, he comes from a company that has one of the probably most beloved brands of, of all time, the Walt Disney Company. Please help me welcome the Director of Cloud Services and Architecture for Walt Disney Company, Chris Lonnie. Chris, thank you for, uh, for being here with us. Could you tell us a little bit about what you're, what you're doing at Walt Disney Company? Sure. I, uh, I, I normally actually tell a story in response to that question, but I'll, I'll give you the quick version. <laughs> you can go home and go to WordPress and register and build out a little website. You can go register DNS, uh, you know, license art, buy some plugins. You can spend 20 minutes with a credit card and have a completely set up web presence. You can go to work and you can submit tickets and fill out process exception request forms and get your boss to send and you know, respond to an email and click something and you can wait and wait and wait. As an entire industry of technologists, we have spent a long time empowering people much better when they go home than when they come to work with their technology. And what I've been trying to do is change that. Inside of Disney, outside of Disney, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like many others I'm sure in the audience are trying to lead a revolution <laughs> To, to help empower people when they come to work with technology. Yeah. So we've talked a few times, and, uh, and you said something that was kind of funny, and I actually made a couple of slides here. <laughs> you said, you know, everybody's familiar with this triangle. Has everybody seen this before? You know, you have the triangle, it's good, fast, cheap, and you get to pick two. And what you said is that that triangle now looks like this. It's just fast, fast, fast. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. If you look at what any business needs these days, if you're dealing at all with information, you need speed. That's what everybody craves. It's, if you give somebody enough fast, they can make their own cheap. They can get their product to market quickly. They can respond to market demands and changes. They can be the first candy game on Facebook instead of the second candy-related game on Facebook. Uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, you, you can deal, you can make your own cheap by just increasing your revenue by just getting to market more quickly and, and being able to work faster. You can make your own good by shrinking your dev cycles. You can change things all the time by only changing little bits at each time. Move to more continuous integration, continuous delivery models. So prod product quality goes up. So if you just give somebody the faster lover's pizza with an extra helping of faster on top of it, they'll go make their own good and their own cheap. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Faster lover's pizza with an extra helping of faster. Um, that's one of, one of my favorite uh, descriptions of it. <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're talking, earlier you were talking a lot about, um, you know, how it shouldn't be easier for them to be more productive at home than at work. You know, you're talking about lowering barriers. And it actually reminds me of, an interaction I had one time, this is you know, a few years back when uh, I was at the Rackspace Cloud and I had gone and spoken at a conference and um, very large corporation, uh, one of their, their IT leaders walked up to me afterwards and, and he said, said, you're creating problems for me. And I said, sorry, you know, what's going on? And, <laughs> and he said, um, my developers inside of my company are going and signing up with your service and putting workloads on, on your your services, and uh, I need you to, to stop letting them do that. Yeah. And I was, I was like, well, how would you like me to do that? And he said, well, I don't know, blacklist you know, xcompany.com email addresses from being able to sign up. Right. And I was like, but they'll just use a personal one. And he's like, well, you know, blacklist IP blocks. And, and I said, well, I mean, it seems like they're looking for something, and maybe that's what, you know, like, the conversation we should have is figure out, like, how can you deliver what they're looking for through a way that meets your requirements? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, uh, you hear, anytime you get technology people together, there's this discussion of shadow IT and how it's a bad thing and you need to, you know, shine the light into the corners and eliminate it. And that's crazy. It's, it's, uh, it's like the little tablets that you chewed when you went to the dentist at age eight that showed you where you weren't brushing properly. Shadow IT is awesome because it shows you <laughs> where your opportunities are, right? Where, where, you're not, where your service is not market competitive. Where are they not compelling? How are you not enabling people to do their jobs? You know, we, we hire amazing, passionate, driven people and then we put mountains of of obstacle course and process in front of them, and we shouldn't do that. You know, and I, I don't mean we, because you know we're uh, we're trying to fix that, but everybody should try to fix that. That's yeah. 
Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of stick out there. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> in the IT world, and and uh, you know, if we change that more to carrot, if we change that more to to enablement, then uh, then we end up with a with a, uh, a I think you know a more empowered set of technologists. Sure. So, um, you know, I had the uh, slide up earlier of of the sponsors that are here, and you know, that's a a, a portion of the the ecosystem that participates in OpenStack. And one thing that that you know, um, I've heard before is people, uh, they, they look at OpenStack and they, they are concerned about how they're going to get started in OpenStack, how they're going to make use of it, because it's a, it's a big set of technologies. But there are a lot of people out there who are able to, uh, to, to help you do that. And, and I, I know that you have an interesting story about that as well. I mean, what, what has your experience been with kind of working with OpenStack and the vendor ecosystem? Um, yeah, I, uh, I was our... I was our virtualization snake oil guy too back in 2007, and you know we we had worked with the, our hypervisor for a, about six months before we felt confident enough to put our first production file server on it, right? And when we deployed OpenStack, we didn't have the time to do that, right? It was it was you know the whole point is let's go fast. So uh, we engaged a company called MetaCloud that we've been working with and and had great success with. Uh, they they take OpenStack, they add to it. You know th there's some. Uh, there's some things that aren't finished yet. They help. They contribute back, you know, to the project, and uh, then they'll deploy and run it for you in your data center. So it it gave us a very quick. We went from month one looking at technologies, month two POC, month three deployed. At the very end of that month, it was we launched a pilot uh, and and ran a pilot of wow. of OpenStack as infrastructure as a service. Yeah. So it's it, yeah, it, you can go very quick, uh, and you don't have to staff up a whole big department of people to, uh, to do the operations and all that kind of stuff for you. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice model because if the whole point is speed, right, and trying to deliver that to people, you want to operate in that same agile model yourself. Right. Okay. Last question. I want to ask you the same thing that I, that I asked Glenn. Um, you know, when you, when you look at, uh, at this infrastructure and the way that, that your business is moving, the trajectory that it's on, does it feel to you like, like those back-end systems and those servers and storage systems and everything, you know, all of that stuff that's that used to just be in a closet somewhere is becoming more strategic and more recognized within your organization as, as providing value. I, I think there's there's not anybody who works with any sort of digital information that doesn't uh, understand that it's important, all that stuff. I also don't know anybody who works with those things who wants to care about all that stuff, <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, it's, it's becoming really important, but it, it also isn't something that people want to spend time, you know, worrying about, right? It's, it's, uh, it's more like the dial tone where it just has to be there and has to work, but you don't, you know, oh, thank goodness the dial tone is still on, right, when you pick up your <laughs> phone. That's an outmoded example because I, I, I haven't heard a dial tone in probably nine months, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, so... Yes, it's, it's obviously of strategic value, but uh, it's also something that you want to provide as a utility service, right? Where when you plug something in, it just works and goes. Yep. Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you again for joining us, and, uh, and we're happy to have you here at the show this week. Thanks a lot.